Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Rough Talk VR. Today we're joined with the developer that I am so excited for this. We just reviewed his game the other week, Vermilion, a new VR painting game. And the whole time I was playing this game, I was like, I have a hundred questions for the guy who made this. Right. So uh, I'm super excited for this interview. We're joined with Thomas Vandenberg. Like I said, he's the developer of Vermilion. Uh, but in case our, our listeners have never played the game or they have no idea who you are or anything like that. Do you mind introducing yourselves and telling them a little bit more what Vermilion is? Yeah. First of all, thank you very much for having me. So um, I'm Thomas. I, uh, I live in Rotterdam here in the Netherlands in Europe. And um, yeah, these past, like, I think almost two years now, I've been I've been working on this project first as like a, a little side project it's called Vermilion. And uh, it started... Um, yeah, quite some time ago, but maybe we can go, get into it later. Just maybe let's start with what Vermillion is. It's um, an old painting simulator game. Um, so you get all the tools, you get your palettes with the, the paints on there. Um, you got a, a couple of brushes um, ready to go. And then you have just, you know, infinite paint supplies. You can paint together with um, any artist you want because there's a, a web browser built into the application. So... Uh, you can stream YouTube artists and learn to paint with them. It was like a, a really big thing. I wanted to get in there. Um, so yeah, I mean, that the basis is that it's just all painting, but in a, a lovely VR setting and currently in two different studios, more coming soon. Um, and it gives you just all the tools and all the, uh, like the subtleties that you would get in real life. Of course, not all of them though, but it's um, as close as, uh, as I could make it. Um, and yeah, it's just a, like a relaxing experience, um, for both people who have never painted before and people who are into painting, but don't want to waste supplies on, <laughs> on everything they do. Uh, yeah, yeah. no, we had talked uh, a lot that, you know, VR painting is all the obstacles of real life painting removed. Like you said, no cost of materials, no judgment in no front cleanup. of people, no cleanup. Uh, so I have a lot of questions in regards to that, but right off the top the number one thing i have to ask and i think i know the answer but you know I, it's just i have to know do you paint in real life <laughs> no uh, actually uh, i don't paint in real life uh i'm very much a, a programmer at heart uh, i've always been a programmer and um yeah so it's yeah it, it just kind of you know we probably get into the the origin story but uh, later in the interview but yeah, i just sort of roll into it and uh, i never stopped going um, but I, you know, I closely watch artists on YouTube, um, seeing like how the paint behaves, you know, learning about the different techniques. And then also I had a lot of uh, luck in the first beta back in the, um, when, I, when I was only on PC, um, I think in like March to, to like June, July of, um, of last year, uh, there were a couple of painters in my beta testing group who had great feedback for me. And um, they, they also have to shape the application, you know, so telling me like, okay, how the brushes should behave or how the paint should be mixing on the canvas. And yeah, that's how it works, you know, just working by feedback and from, from observation. I do have real brushes with me. I have uh, paints also as well here, but you know, it's, it's like I said, you know, it's a, a real mess to set it up and to clean it up. So <laughs> uh, I've always in, been intending to, to learn to paint uh, in real life as well. Uh, and uh, I'm sure I will be, I will be able to now because, uh, you know, the, the, the big stress of, um, of the releases is, is over now. Um, but yeah, just, uh, I'm a programmer, you know, and that, that's how it is. That's wild. We were we were having the the back and forth. We're like, what are the chances? Do you think that he doesn't paint in real life? And yeah, like, why would <laughs> that? It seems like such a um, a harder medium to try to tackle without the the real then, life experience. Then going down maybe a an easier easier road of something with a that allows you to color color blend and mix and match and. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, I said yeah, I yeah. expect, I, I think I know the answer. I was expecting to hear him say, "Yeah, I've been painting since I was, you know, ten. Got so. a master's. In, in <laughs> no, let's let's get right into the origin story now. You know, how did <laughs> yeah. how did you go from, you know, what what exactly is your background in programming? For one, you know, you you sell oh, yeah. trains, school, and then how the hell did that lead into this, you know, amazing yeah, VR painting similar? The toughest thing I could probably find. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah okay so starting with my background um i 
um, studied um, it's called new media and communication technologies, like a very vague term, but there was like uh, just C sharp programming and couple, like web design and a couple of other things. And also one of the courses was just, okay, you can do any project you want to. And in that project, I was uh, taught myself to do unity. Um, and uh, yeah, ever since then I've been doing unity on the side. It wasn't like a, a thing we actually got, got in the, in college, but I was just interested in, um, you know, in these game engines, because yeah, you know, as a gamer, you're always also interested in, you know, how it works, you know, and especially when you also learn programming, you want to do it a bit, of, a little bit yourself. So uh, my first job, uh, I worked there for, for five years or almost six was at a creative agency. So they make these uh, interactive applications for like museums and expos and also for enterprise. So it's stuff like, um, these big video projections, which are interactive or like s simple touchscreen applications or phone augmented reality applications, you know, these kind of things. You know, when you, when you go to some place and it's like, okay, you have a tablet and you can walk around the place, you get information, you know, they make these kind of things. And I usually got the, the, the cool projects for them. And then in 2016, we, um, we got the, uh, DK2, right. The Oculus developer kit two, which was like the, um, like the second, I guess, really uh, kind of wildly available um, consumer kind of hardware for VR. And that was my first experience with VR. Um, and when, when I first had it, I was like, um, yeah, immediately, you know, really taken with the, with the technology, right? It's like just a, such a cool experience. And I stayed late in the office, you know, um, I think one of the, one of the managers, he, he had like a racing wheel and then we set up um, oh, there's this racing sim. I even forgot the name of it. Where we set it up with, with VR, and you know, it's just like something I was really passionate about. Um, but there weren't that many projects with VR in in the company because you know, g getting these VR kind of things in a museum is always like a bit troubling. Uh, they they tend to break all the time, right? These headsets. If you put them in a museum, you put like ten headsets in there, and unless you have a guy or a woman sitting there managing every headset all the time, like they break constantly. Like people are not careful at all with these museum VR headsets. Uh, so there weren't a lot of VR projects at, at work, and I really wanted to do more in VR, right? I want to be full time VR. So like after I started like doing my own projects, like prototyping, I made like a, a dragon riding prototype uh, because I used to be also like a source uh, Half-Life 2 modder back in the day, back when I, when I was a teenager, I worked on this mod called Pirates, Vikings and Knights 2. Uh, and I made, I was like a custom mapper for, for the mod, right? And it was like a mod where you could ride a dragon. It was a really cool thing. And I know back then, a couple of years later, I was like, okay, let's revive the Triton VR. Never really got anywhere, but just like training my skills, you know, working with Unreal Engine and next to Unity as well, just, you know, doing VR stuff. And then, um, yeah, uh, in the end of 2019, I, I quit my job and my girlfriend and I um, decided to go travel around the world, right? So we wanted to do six months traveling, um, first three months in, um, in Southeast Asia. And we were in Cambodia the, the second month. Uh, but that was like um, March 2020, right? So COVID was like in full force by then. And we decided we had to return home. But we couldn't re easily return home even, right? Because I had um, ditched my apartment because we were traveling and we wanted to go live somewhere new. And we couldn't return home to like our parents, right? Because it wasn't allowed to. Everything is in lockdown. You're not allowed to see your relatives. So we stayed in this apartment that luckily was, uh, was available for us from uh, like... Um, from another family member, but it was in a town we didn't know, we couldn't see anyone. We had to cut our, our trip short, so we were feeling kind of down, you know? It, was, uh, it wasn't really a great time, um, because you know, your whole future in that moment, like, you know, it, it kind of you know, fell in the water. It's like, what, what are we gonna do now? You know, we were so hell-bent on this trip, and now it's already canceled. We didn't have any job at the time. Luckily, I could actually um, remotely do uh, do a bit of work for my old uh, employer back then, but still, you know, it was it was kind of tough. And uh, you know, we're looking for some peace of mind. I actually like rediscovered Bob Ross on YouTube. Yeah, you know, and and he has this quality, right? He's like so zen. You know, he's really charming. He's just calm, and you know, 
And then being uh, you know, a developer with real-time technology, being into VR, I was like, you know, can I take this into VR as a prototype? So I built like a pretty rough prototype where I just paint on like a floating <laughs> rectangle in like a black void with then um, one single video also on the square next to me of Bob Ross, right? And um, I made a little video of it. Uh, and I put it on LinkedIn. LinkedIn was my only social network, which I had, right? I didn't have Facebook. Uh, this had years ago. I didn't have Twitter. So I put it on LinkedIn. I had like 70 contacts, right? But it went like pretty viral. It had like tens of thousands of views. And it was like a, a lot of feedback and people were really into it. So I was like, okay, maybe this is a thing that people are interested in, right? This painting experience with Bob in VR without the mess, you know, but the ease of access of it. And yeah, ever since then, I just sort of kept working on it. Um, and then, you know, you sort of have to learn about the different techniques, right? Because this, uh, like you said, like, why did you pick oil painting? Why not something easier? Because you know, there's always other, there's other VR painting applications as well. And they're more like, okay, directly picking color on a color wheel and applying the color with a brush to the, to the canvas. Right. Um, but it doesn't really have like the thickness of it. It doesn't have these different qualities. So that's the thing that also appealed to me, right? Like this, this really physical quality of the oil paint. So. Yeah, that's a reason that you know, it was challenging to do, but it was a, like something which somehow really triggered me to keep wanting to learn more about it, to keep um, improving it. Because um, yeah, just when you watch these guys working on YouTube, you know, there's something about the like this this magic quality of of this paint, you know, bringing something to life on the canvas, which always inspired me. Um, and yeah, I mean it it inspired me to keep pushing hard and make it the best I can. So yeah, that's about it. That's uh, about how it went, you know, <laughs> that, that bit of a magic feeling, I'd say you, you carry over in the tutorial that you have everybody do. Well, you don't have to do it, but that, that intro <laughs> tutorial that follow along, you know, I'll watch you do stroke. That's why I assume that you painted in real life. Yeah. Make it look so easy. Yeah. We actually party chatted <laughs> while we both did the tutorial and I was like, uh, I see him do the stroke. I, do it what i think is the same but it's not looking the same oh, it just makes it look so <laughs> you know you just put the sky there you know ah, yeah it took me 10 minutes oh yeah I <laughs> well we, we i mean that, that, that's how it goes i think if you try to do paint with the with bob himself right he's so quick but it's just like coming down to to experience right he's done thousands of the same style of paintings right it's insane and um you know, uh, this is like the one kind of painting which I managed to do <laughs> because I've done this kind of thing a couple of times for the demos, you know, and for, like like I said, the first video which I recorded was also this kind of painting. So that's just the one kind of thing which I can kind of barely manage to paint, you know. <laughs> so for anything more challenging, I will need to be uh, practicing more myself. And luckily, there's also other people, um, like really talented community members who've also done other tutorials. You know, like there's there's a um, a bird paint tutorial as well from someone who's really good at that. So um, yeah, that's that's a nice thing about having a community, right? There's there's lots of people out there who wanted to teach you um, different techniques. No, I, some of the stuff I see coming from the community is over the top good. I mean, mm. like I knew when we had mentioned it, like oh yeah, wait until the beast painters come out and just start killing it, and they've already started coming out. I mean. I see constant posts, even people who use the um, projector to necessarily trace, they're still putting stuff out. It's, oh yeah. 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 Uh, and there's, there's no shame in the projector, by the way, like even like these top notch artists, they're using the projector. So, I mean, you definitely should not be like, Oh, am I a real painter? I'm projecting yet. Yeah, yeah. You still are, but yeah, they have been doing great stuff. Yeah, like there's um, a fa the official Facebook group is available now. It's called, um, yeah, I think it's just called Vermilion VR, the official Facebook group. And people have been putting great stuff in there. One of them is uh, painting like all of the classic like Looney Tunes characters using the projector, right? But yep. it looks it looks really good. Yep, I can't yeah. go on uh, Facebook without seeing um, some of his stuff. He did, yeah. He oh yeah, some of the full full characters. Tweety Bird, you know. Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. Just about almost every every Looney Tune character at this point. It's like daily he's pumping them out. So yeah, he's having, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool he's he's, he's really, really prolific. People are enjoying the hell out of this, which is, you know, overall, I, th I think what the whole concept behind whatever art you do is about, you know, you, you get to release and escape and create content. And no, it, it, I, I can't, 
I've heard rumors that for you to do the colors, it's not as easy as people might think to be able to have all these colors and then get them. So as a programmer, was that like a, a tough obstacle or? Yeah, anything? yeah. The, the color mixing was a, a tough one to get because something which I, I did want to have is that you're able to follow real world oil painting tutorials in VR. And a big part of it is mixing colors. Like there's still people asking now like, oh, why don't I just get like a color picker, like a color wheel? And I think like it's it's a big part of the experience and it really isn't so challenging. It's actually, it's, it's quite easy, but it's like a big part of the fun. But it, it was like a, a, a one of the challenging things to get right. Like um, the big thing is of course, you know, when you're mixing yellow and blue, you're gonna get green. But in um, normally in a digital application, you, you don't get it, right? It's like a linear interpolation between these two colors and you get like some kind of vague mix in between. Like if you look at Photoshop, you know, you look at your hue wheel, you know, uh, there's no green in between those two. It's like on a separate scale. So that was a, a tough one to get right. Um, but yeah, I was, uh, I actually got it done like a bit sooner than I, than I expected. And uh, yeah, it's just like a big part of the, of the experience for me is just the color mixing. I agree with that. It's almost therapeutic. You know, yeah, yeah, just... yeah, I think so. And also, if you're looking at these artists doing it for real, you know, there's like this great video where he explains um, how to how to mix any color, how to match any color, and you just see them take this color and then make like this nice, you know, <laughs> big circle on their palette, you know, and it just these colors are shifting and uh, mixing together, creating new shades. And you always think like, when, when you, f you see that first, you think like, there's no way I can get like a nice dark saturated green from just the primary colors, right? From from a um, blue layer red and uh, white. He's like, there's no way you get a nice green. And he just does it with like takes a bit of blue, a bit of yellow, and then oh, a little bit of red in there, and boom, it's done. I'm like, this is so crazy, but yeah, it's it's a big part of the fun for me. And I think for many people uh, who are now discovering it for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't speak highly enough about it. I mean, I loved everything about it. So, I mean, it it succeeded in giving me everything I wanted to do in painting VR, including the ability to have instruction. Like, because I'm not a painter. So, you know, you give me the canvas, I'll slap stuff around. And that's why blending <laughs> was always my thing. Like, oh, I just love blending shit on a canvas. So yeah. I actually have the ability to produce, you know, not an award-winning piece of art, but an actual something that you can go okay i see it you know there's the lake and there's the trees and there's i get it yeah it's we, like that 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 fulfilled my biggest need for one of these experiences just because of the yeah. tutorial we had described it as for the cost of the game not only are you getting the painting simulator you're getting an art class oh, yeah, as well as hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of dollars of content for education because it's endless it's like like you said, I mean, it's integrated with the the YouTube web browser, so yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Who you want to learn to paint from, mm -hmm. and wait till wait till content creators start, you know, focusing on vermilion specific teaching tutorials like the built-in one. Oh yeah, yeah, totally accessible from that YouTuber. You know, wait till people are like, that guy's just... really cool, by the way. Oh yeah, that yeah. was <laughs> amazingly done. It's great to have as background noise uh, and fall. You know, you don't necessarily need to follow along, but you're just getting these tips as you're painting. Like, getting a huh, good education. No yeah. shit, huh? So yeah. uh, <laughs> I, I know this game was up and running on some other headsets on like PC VR and I believe the Rift. You know, long before the Quest. But what was it like to get it running standalone on the Quest Two? Oh, that was really challenging. Like. Honestly, it was not an easy time, right? Because, um, yeah, I, I started on PC VR even, and when I first started and shared the first prototype, people were asking me like, why are you doing this on PC VR? You know, everyone knows that all the money is on Quest, but that's all I had, you know, I only have my, um, here it is, my uh, original Vive, you know, the, the OG Vive, and that's where I used to program on, and that's where I get started. And um, yeah, when when you're working on, on your on your PC, working on PC VR, uh, the the bar is also really high, right? Because you can push any amount of uh, data you want on there, and it doesn't really matter, right? You just have your GPU in there, and you just put on high quality. And then I could I focus purely on getting the feeling right, you know, getting the look right, uh, and didn't really have to worry about optimization because I knew just you know it's just gonna run. Um, but then um, I was contacted by Facebook when even when I made the first announcement trailer, they, they contacted me. Uh, you want to come to the store? I was like, yeah, I want to come to the store. 
um, because I knew if I want to be if, if I want to take it full time, you know, um, being on Steam alone is not enough. So I knew I, I didn't really have a, much of a choice there. You know, if I want to take this full time, make it like a good thing, I have to come to Quest as well. And I, you know, I also wanted to because there are so many people who either don't want to mess with a PC or they don't have like this this big gaming rig, right? They only get the Quest. I think for quite a few people, the Quest is like their only gaming system. Like they never had a console before, even but they, they didn't have, get that Quest. So I also wanted to get it there for them, but it was super challenging, like to, to get the to get it running um and uh, many many technical difficulties uh because i didn't want to give anything up right i did want to i wanted to have full feature parity between the pc version and the quest version and it i did end up in, with it the only thing the only concession which i had to make was i had to reduce the re- resolution of the painting on quest versus pc just because it can't push as many pixels um and in single frame as a pc can and there, there is like an experimental API which might be able to push it a little bit more. But yeah, for a moment, that's what it is. You know, we have to remember the Crest is, you know, it's a standalone device. It's like a mobile phone, you know. And yeah, there's only so much it can do. Uh, so I'm really glad with, with like, with, that it's running on there, that it is there at full frame rate. But yeah, it was a tough time, let me tell you. Like uh, <laughs> a lot of stressing going on there, not a lot of support. Um <laughs> yeah, it, it was we, a we, a real struggle. We assumed it was literally pushing whatever the max capabilities of it is. It's your yeah, your yeah. If if you're pushing. if you're paying close attention, for instance, when you're doing a, an undo, um, it will actually update it in four separate frames. <laughs> so you you will see it going like a little bit of tiles because it it can't undo or redo the whole painting at once on Quest without dropping frames. So that's like one of the optimizations to do an undo or a redo. It has to do it in like four separate frames. So you can see it like doing a little tile. You know, and there's many things like that in there just to make it to to be able to get it there without dropping frames. You know, it was a lot of creative thinking, a lot of looking at these um, frame captures, right? So we see this full breakdown of everything happening in a single frame. And then it's just like analyzing, you know, like detective work. What can I change to make a run? without sacrificing any of the features which i have in there um yeah well, it, it runs fantastic yeah there's not I found nothing there was no not a glitch to be had so. and the resolution of the painting at least on my end it, it looks high quality looks damn good to me i, I saw nothing like yeah oh, yeah, you yeah. Know, it looks if, like if you're good. if you're side by side with pc you're gonna notice right it's definitely a lot crisper on pc but if you're just doing it on, on, on quest you know there's nothing left to be wanting you know it's just yeah it, it just beyond, looks it, it looks right beyond the painting even in in some of the environments i i always joke about the red velvet the chair. chair that red chair is so <laughs> freaking high quality i'm like that looks like a pc vr chair on the quest so it's even uh, even just the background details are are depending on which environment you use you use the the mental institution white room you know there's not too much uh there's not too much it's, graphical it's really funny that you mention it because um there, there's like like two camps of people, and I knew this was going to be the case, right? <laughs> so um, I'm also more of a more of a manner guy. That was always like the original one, which I got in there um, because it's like this kind of stately thing. It was supposed to be reminiscent of like this, um, like the old Dutch masters, right? They had like these fancy manners, you know, like pretty stately homes, you know. And I, I really enjoy the environment. But there's always people who are like, oh, like literally <laughs> now on the Facebook group, like it, it used to be even like a lot more like run down, look in the manner, I cleaned up fully. It's like um, super nice now with like golden edges and everything. But even now on the Facebook group, there was a woman and she was like, I find the default manner so depressing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and they're like, oh, the, like this loft is like so nice and clean, you know, it's just a wide environment. So there's like, it's uh, different people have different tastes, you know, for some people just really like the cl- the cleanliness of like a nice right environment and others just like the coziness of the manor, you know, and it's important to have both. And I was so stressed with um, getting it just running up to frame rate. I was first thinking, okay, I- I'm going to have to put the loft after release because I can't manage it. But my girlfriend, she really pushed me. She was like, you really got to get the loft in there from the start because there's going to be people who are not going to like the manor. And, you know, I listened to her, I pushed it in there. And she's right, you know, people really dig having the having the choice to have like a, a nice modern clean environment 
uh, next to a classical environment because yeah, people have different preferences. And there's definitely more coming. The first thing that's coming, which I'm working on now, the update is probably coming this week, is um, nighttime and evening variants um, of these studios. Because as people are painting at night, you know, it's <laughs> really funny. That people are often like completely losing track of time while they're painting. Some of them are like, oh, I was up until 5 a.m. And it's like, <laughs> you should go to bed. But, you know, then it's really nice to have like a nighttime environment because otherwise it's really bright in the headset, you know, it's not good for your sleep pattern. So that's going to be like the first update is going to drop in um, just, you know, these nighttime environments, nighttime versions of the same environments. And there's going to be more studios coming, you know, people are really um, looking forward to some kind of outdoor environment, maybe some kind of um, ur urban environment as well. So, um, yeah, more studios are coming. Uh, definitely. That's freaking awesome. At, at first, I was because even when we played it, I was like, "Shit, I'm content with just the the couple of environments you have." I'm like, "I'm I'm good." I didn't see a need for other ones, but from a creative standpoint, I could see where even like the nighttime mood is going to change your your thinking. Mm. The outdoor scene is going to change your inspiration. So you know, there's yeah. A, there's something yeah it's, it's like the point. scenery is like a, a, a relatively simple thing to do which changes a lot of the perception of the application but yeah i mean normally when you're painting you're, you're so engrossed in the process of the actual painting that you don't really pay much mind to the environment but it's kind of like a subconscious thing you know there's um the originally uh there's many applications were just like okay there's just like a, an empty sky box or something around you and just like a floating thing because they're like, yeah, you're painting anyway. But for me, it was very important that you're grounded in like a real room where you have the light reflection on the floor so that everything feels spatial, right? It feels more real when you have like this 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 setting where everything is like to scale, you know? It was important to me that you're not up against the wall um, because, you know, you otherwise you feel kind of closed in. You know, so yeah, that, that's why like it it, may, it might look strange that you're in this room in the middle of the room, you know, and it's not really around you. But for me, it it was important to have the walls there, but not too close, you know, to have the floor and but it has to look nice, you know, and yeah, it just it's there. You just so you don't fall over the world, but it's also just as like a subconscious thing that you're like, okay, I'm in this nice place, you know, I I'm here, I can be creative, and. Um, yeah, th that was kind of like the, the main thought behind the, the scenery. You know, it, yeah, it's not like the um, super stuffed or props, you know, it could be, but I just, I want to keep it simple and um, not distracting, but yeah, that's that's the thought behind the scenery as it stands now. No, I, I love the manor. I feel, I feel wealthy. Yeah, yeah. I, think <laughs> right, I can yeah, afford yeah. to have a room it's that size that I can just. Yeah, paint yeah, in. yeah. Mm -hmm. With with this nice golden trim and everything, you know. Yeah, yep. it makes I'm you, you uh, that red velvet chair. <laughs> like, yeah, the, the is, chair, this... man. Yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I can't help but feeling that you know the the white room that like you know a week ago I I mentally broke and I've been on psych pills last week and I'm just coming <laughs> to and they're like, all right, you want to draw some paintings? <laughs> I get the whole I get the whole clean though. I do get yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I almost wish like in the a... white room. If it if it made a mess, I would use the white room. Yeah. If if I'm painting <laughs> and then paint flies out now, there's red on the ground and green. I would be using the white room. Like the world's my. Uh, but it, it's like a, a real style of apartment. You know, it's like this white wall loft. If you look it up, they they look like this. You know, it's, it's oh yeah, a no, style. everything, even the appliances, the the countertops, the cabinets, everything's yep. white. I'm way too messy of a human being to live in an apartment like that. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't can't even imagine so it sounds to me is, is this a, a one-man team are you a one-man army on oh, this? Yeah, you mentioned yeah. lack you know no support or anything uh yeah, yeah. I it's, it's not like totally... a dev studio no it's just me and for almost all of it it was just next to my full-time job right so i was working i was always getting up at six in the morning uh working my daytime job for 40 hours a week and then after work i was, I was continuing into the night where every weekend took all my vacation to work on Vermillion instead of going on vacation. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was a tough time, you know, because um, you, with a video game, especially like as an indie game, you have no idea if it's gonna be sustainable to do it. And I've never been independent before, you know, I've always been uh, employed. So the jump to being um, self-employed is, is really big, like, and also in our culture, you know, maybe it's different in the States, but here, we are kind of risk averse 
And if you're not certain that you're going to be succeeding, if you're not certain you're going to be making enough money to sustain yourself, even if you have savings, you know, you're, you're not going to be keen to just quit your job and do it. So I did everything next to my day job just because I didn't know if, if it was going to be sustainable, you know, or on the long term. Um, and then only in December uh, last year, so just a couple of months ago, I quit my job and worked fully full time on Vermillion just because I was like, okay, I can't handle doing the quest pool next to my job anymore. Like it's not possible anymore. Um, especially like the, I think the, the good thing about it was with, um, with COVID um, is that, you know, it was always work at home um, or very limited um, going to the office. So just the hours saved, it's like two hours commute in total, right? Every day, just saving these hours, it made it, made it possible to be working on, on a side project like this. So um, that was like a, the main driver of making this, at all possible to do it next to a job yeah but yeah always been a one-man team um still am to this day i i expected more i figured like four or five maybe on the the high end but one person that's that's freaking amazing yeah that's an impressive and store approved right impressive undertaking to pull off with one person but you know why because it freaking works it does what it's supposed to do I think it provides what it's supposed to provide from any level, from beginner to professional. And again, you, you have freaking tutorials. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, so. you can take a, a newbie who knows nothing and turn them loose. So, I mean, I, I mentioned in the podcast, it's like, who knows where that next great artist is going to come from. And it might be as simple as putting on a headset and trying painting for the first time so it's... yeah 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 there's actually people um who let their kids uh, use a headset uh for a couple of minutes you know and and they let them paint in 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 vr now with vermilion and you know it's a lot of fun there's even this one guy i uh, posted in the discord and um he let his daughter she was like six or eight or something probably eight um let her do a painting and she was just going wild in there and as a parent it's very nice because you know you're not gonna get the entire house super messy um yeah. and you know the child had a, uh, had a fun time and then afterwards he printed he ordered like a canvas print of her painting and put it up in her room as a surprise so that you know she has like a physical thing from her own creation so i think you know it, it could be a thing you know that people getting this uh like this creative spark in a very accessible way you know, if you already have like a quest in the end there you know it's just a very accessible way to to get into art yeah no it congratulations as well for going full-time that that's that's huge you know it's, i always love to hear the the story of indie devs you know being able to quit their jobs and it become a full-time gig um so set the bar pretty high though right with this first <laughs> release so i was actually going to get into that so being full-time now uh i know shit this was probably so much stress putting it out you know it's good to decompress a couple months actually enjoy life especially you know without the the real life job now actually take a breath um but do you have any plans going forward maybe with monetizing for million maybe with live art classes or something we had we had talked in the podcast or just future oh, yeah, games yeah. other projects anything like that no, no i'm currently still like there's so much still that i want to add to <laughs> to the base game um so yeah, like I said, I'm, work, I'm working now on, on these new uh, new environments, and there's like a couple of features I still want to add, like um, like a, an axis aligned hand stabilizer. So it's like a thing where you can simulate your hand resting on on um, like on the stick. It's like a real thing. It's one of the features I want to add. But then the, the big first feature I'm adding is going to be um, allowing you to put up your artwork in the studio or on your actual living room walls uh, with the posture, right? Um, that's like a, a thing many people want to do like okay I want to be able to frame even my artwork put up on the walls in the studio or a separate gallery maybe and then I also want to make the first step towards multiplayer so that you can invite your people in VR to come look at your artwork um, and then that's yeah huge. and then the final goal would be actual multiplayer you know painting with other people in the same room but that's going to be like like a serious challenge. I probably will need to, to get some uh, some freelance stuff to come help me out for that one. But yeah, I mean, multiplayer would be like a big thing because social VR is a lot of fun. Like I think like casual social VR because like walkabout mini golf is like this huge success, right? I think they also uh, talk to you guys, right? Yep. Um, and uh, because people just come in there just to, to have a chat even, you know? And I think it could be the same with uh, an application like Vermillion. It could just be like casually doing like artwork, painting along with a guy and then still chatting with your friend, you know, 
but yeah, that, that's like the long term goal. And hopefully, I can still make it this year. And I don't know, I'll, I'll be working towards it. But it's you know, <laughs> multiplayer is like a real challenge. You know, you can't just click the multiplayer button and have it working, especially mm -hmm. with painting. You know, because there's so much data you have to synchronize, right? You can't like a classic multiplayer game is you synchronize only like the the vectors of the movement. Just like okay, he jumped. Okay, then do the jump animation on your side. But you can't do it with painting because of latency. You know, if you would only synchronize the movement of the brushes, it's going to be looking very different to what you actually painted, right? Because if there's some kind of lag, that, that tree is going to be very crooked on your side, right? So you, you have to synchronize the entire painting, but that's a lot of video data, right? It's like doing a Twitch stream from everyone who's also in the multiplayer with you while compressing your painting at the same time to send it out to the other guys. So, you know, it's going to be a technical hurdle. It's going to be a challenge, but I'm going to try it. Oh, man. So, yeah, I mean, the there's plenty of stuff I still want to, to be at to Vermillion every day. People are putting in feature requests. Um, and, yeah, I think there's still a lot of room to grow for the application. I want Vermillion to be, like, the go-to art application uh, in VR. So uh, I'm working towards it, you know, still growing it, growing the features. Yeah. It's, well, this is the foundation, oh, which, yeah. which, you know, Let's just pretend you didn't do shit ever again to it. It's, it's a finished game. It's it's finished. It's <laughs> polished. It works. It functions. So everything that comes after this now is just yeah, pure, yeah, yeah. Everything is like icing on the cake, right? Um, no, no. I, I'm very <laughs> pleased with with especially with the version which came to Quest. Um, it's like the the full 1.0 version um, with everything in there working as I wanted it, with like super smooth painting physics. Um, yeah, so I'm really pleased with where it stands now. It was, it was tough to get it here. But yeah, now it's looking at like you know, more stuff and especially things like multiplayer make it like such an interesting proposition. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to be working on it. It's going to be challenging, I, but I'm going to do my best. I am, I'll, be, I'll be watching every second for this. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm mind blown though because we had said on the podcast that was the one dream feature and we had even emphasized <laughs> how selfish it was because the game is clearly running at yeah. max optimization like it's pushing the the limits it's pushing so much. it yeah if there was anything we could have had it would be the ability to to live paint with each other because we're on party chat talking to each other you know during it anyway so to hear that that's potentially in the works you know down the line it's something you're down eyeing, the line yeah 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 i didn't Hopefully, even think it would be possible so oh my god well, i'm so so excited yeah. I'm, I'm I, I don't know if it's possible, right? It's also a dream <laughs> yeah. of mine. So even, uh, some, I'll, I'll figure something out, right? Yeah, even something some sort of social work. gallery where Listen, we could see each other's yeah, paintings. The social gallery is around. definitely going to come, right? So this is a fun thing. Uh, on one hand, I'm kind of hoping that the, um, the Facebook will be um, allowing user-made content in the home environment because social home is coming to Quest, right, in this year. Um, they're, they're gonna allow you to have multiplayer advice to to your VR homes from you know, your request homes, but currently you can't put user made models in there. Um, they only allow pre made game models like trophies, you know. But I have to upload a pre made model to their platform and then you can use it and display it, which is of course not going to work for paintings, right? So maybe that's going to be a thing they're going to allow, but otherwise. Definitely like the social VR inside of Vermillion, but probably like a free demo version where you can visit your friends, right? That, that would make the most sense that you can say like, I painted this thing, come look at it. And they're like, oh, but I don't have Vermillion. Like, oh, you can just get the free demo version and then come join me, look at my stuff. You know, that's that's going to be step one towards multiplayer. I Maybe Facebook just come in and buy you up. We'll, <laughs> we'll get this guy for 10 minutes. <laughs> Then you'll, uh, then you'll be definitely integrated yeah. into the home environment. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you will be the home environment. <laughs> I'm just I'm just excited that somebody brought something to the table that does what it's supposed to do, is going to continue to grow. I mean, if, if multiplayer doesn't happen, it'll never it's be understandable. It's like if people just go, you know, you, you can only squeeze something so hard to get, you know, next headset, I'd, I'd probably yeah. see more. I mean, yeah, the hardware is always improving as well, right? So, Almost if it's definitely. not going to work on the on this one, it's going to definitely be there on the next one, right? So, but I, I, I love always hearing that this is just a corner. pump and dump. You have yeah, so no, much more you want to do with it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I never tire of working on it. You know, 
even now I didn't even take a break, you know, I just kept working. <laughs> I'm taking it more slowly. It's it's kind of strange. I was like super productive in in the months, weeks, days leading up to it. I was like constantly working at like a hundred percent brain power. And then after release, you know, I was still working on it, but it's somehow it goes a lot slower. And I think it's normal. I've I talked to other developers about, uh, who did the same thing. Other solo developers like um, um, Julien from Smash Drums. He's also like a solo indie developer making like a, a cool full-on um, store game. And yeah, I mean, somehow after release, you know, you, you feel like, okay, maybe you were burning out a little bit <laughs> on uh, going full ham on it all the time. So I'm still working on it every day, uh, except the weekends. I do take weekends now, which is very nice. Uh, but I, I pace myself a little bit more. I go for a longer walk, you know, and I'm, I try not to be too hard on myself if I'm not getting any, everything done by the time I was thinking it would take me. So, yeah. But I really enjoy working on Vermilion, and I just love seeing these paintings that people are making. Like, every day, there's, like, new stuff on the Facebook group or on Discord, um, and it's just really motivating me, you know? So I love it. No, that's awesome. Yeah. And Thomas Van Bowel of Cubism is another solo dev, and I'm glad to see oh, you guys yeah. aren't the same, the same gentleman. I was waiting for him to pop on this because we had previously interviewed him. The name's awfully similar. I was like, man, if Thomas Van Bowel pops on this screen, and he's the one who made the million <laughs> So, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I know, uh, like you've alluded to, you take the weekends off, you, you still working very hard at this game. So we appreciate, you know, you taking almost an hour of your time to, to sit and talk with us. Uh, easily we could, could go an hour and a half, two hours talking with you. This has been a, a, a breeze of an interview. So we'll wrap it up now while there's a, a little bit of a moment and, uh, hopefully in the future when, you know, more features like multiplayer or just other updates come. You know, hopefully we can have you back on the podcast again to talk about that a bit more. Oh, I would love to. I would love to come back. It's very awesome. nice chatting with you. So, uh, guys, if you have guys and girls, you haven't played Vermilion yet, you haven't checked it out. Oh, man, you gotta, you're, you gotta. You're, you're missing out. And if you enjoy it, do what every game developer says helps them so much. Just like us with podcast reviews, you know, we say rate us five stars, subscribe. You know, go drop Vermilion a five star written review. It's it deserves it. It's a very polished game. So hats Thank off to Thomas, much. and hopefully we can have you up, have you back on again soon. Yeah, see you next time.